Hi everybody, welcome to Sunya Yes and again welcome back to the high yielding topics for environment for prelims 2023. In this we will be seeing environmental organizations and body, this is part 1, it is a two part lecture. So the international bodies I will cover in, in this first part okay and in the second part we will be covering the Indian environmental bodies okay. So what all are we going to cover, one is Commission on Sustainable Development, IUCN, UNEP, World Meteorological Organization. IPCC, okay, WWF, wildlife crime related, there are many bodies which we will be covering all of them today in one place, okay, right, then we have United Nations Forum on Forest, Global Tiger Forum and International Tropical Timber Organization, okay. So one by one I will cover, this is often a lesser known body but you should know, this is Commission on Sustainable Development, we have already discussed that sustainable development, the proper concept was outlined. In the Brundtland Commission report, which is known as Our Common Future in 1987, okay, that is sustainable development. The Commission for Sustainable Development was set up, okay, to review, this was set up in 1992, okay, by United Nations General Assembly. So, two things you need to know, one, that this was set up under ECOSOC, okay, which is of course under UN, that is number one. And the second thing is that this body was made to at least ensure effective following of 1992 Earth Summit or the Rio Summit. The other name for that is UN Conference on Environment and Development. Okay, this was the Commission on Sustainable Development and this was replaced later on by a body in Rio plus 20. Okay which this body is known as high level political forum on sustainable development high level political forum on sustainable development replaced in rio plus 20 and this again functions under ecosoc so yes there is a united nations influence in this as well okay so this body is now replaced by this high level political forum on sustainable development that's all you need to know here in the commission on sustainable development now the next is a very famous and a prominent body iucn formed in the year 1948 okay now most of us know that yes this is responsible for the red list of threatened species okay so yes it has a red list in which it talks about critically endangered endangered vulnerable extinct in the wild extinct all this classification is given and in this red data book in the pink pages it talks about critically endangered species okay so this classification is something that you need to be aware about okay and from biodiversity perspective we need to know exactly that which are the critically endangered let's say mammals critically endangered birds a reptile okay so in case if you are aware give me one example each from india critically endangered one mammal one critically endangered bird and one reptile. I have through my classes and through these lectures given you some examples in between. So just write down that will help you recall. Alright. So this is very important here and because it's a very old body, okay, so it has been instrumental in Ramsar, okay, which take talks about wetlands, okay, in sites, in heritage conventions and CBD, so on and so forth. So there are many conventions which are helped by IUCN. Now, IUCN is actually held by a series of six commissions. Maybe some of you know this species survival commission. Okay, this is under IUCN. But apart from this, there are total six conventions. Okay, so one is on education, communication, ecosystem management, environmental, uh, economic and this social policy. But the most important one, which is often cited in many reports and newspaper, is this species survival commission. That is something we also need to know, right? and other two are world commission on environmental law so totally six commissions okay apart from this now in iucn what all have you done okay so i'll just help you recall we had seen born challenge okay which was held by germany the gov uh, german government and iucn okay apart from this there is a famous report known as ocean deoxygenation Again, that is by IUCN. Apart from this, IUCN also gives out this hope spots. Okay, 
like Iocene is also involved here. Hope spots basically talk about the ocean or coastal bodies, okay, which are very important from biodiversity perspective. Examples in India include two sites, Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep. Okay, so these are some of the important things with which IUCN is re related and is famous for. Okay, other initiatives I will cover overall all the initiatives at one place at a separate. Here I am just introducing the bodies and their very important work. All right, then we have very important United Nations Environment Program UNEP formed in the year 1972. Of course, around 50 years plus have passed. So this body also becomes important and I'll show you why this is also important for this year. So this is one. I've also covered all the reports of UNEP in the reports lecture. Please go back and see some of the prominent reports include emissions global, sorry, the emission gap, production gap, adaptation gap report. Okay. Global environment outlook total. I've covered six reports. So in case if you are not aware, please go back and see the report and indices lecture. Okay. Now, it is headquartered out of US. So it is one of those very few bodies which is out of US. This is in Nairobi, UNEP. Okay. So it is famous for right now in COP27. There is this Mars, which is methane alert. Uh, sorry, methane alertness and response system that is known as Mars initiative. It is helped by UNEP. Make sure you know that. And there is this international methane emissions observatory which will keep a track on the emissions of methane all right so that is one thing apart from that there are an other initiatives like for example there is this faith for earth initiative okay again by unep but again from the exams perspective this is very important okay this is something you should know about okay apart from that there is also one more initiative in which unep is a part that is known as global methane assessment that is by UNEP and CCAC okay this is uh, the cl climate clean air coalition climate clean air coalition talks about short lived climate pollutants okay which include methane which includes black carbon which includes tropospheric ozone tropospheric ozone is the bad ozone Okay, so this is also one thing CCAC again can be asked from you CCAC takes care of short lived climate pollutants. Okay, which include these. This is global methane assessment. This is Mars. And again, one more thing so that you don't get confused. Mars is in COP 27. In COP 26, there is global methane pledge. I'm just writing the word pledge. Here only one thing you need to remember that India is not a part of global methane pledge. It is in COP26, COP27 is Mars and earlier there was a global methane assessment of UNEP and CCAC. Okay, so methane, three in initiatives of methane I have told you while covering UNEP. Okay, then you have this World Meteorological Organization. We have already covered many reports of World Meteorological Organization. It has many functions which include sharing of the meteorological data that helps to know about floods, droughts. Okay. It also focuses a lot on early warning systems. Okay. So that is there. So protecting the locust swarms, etc. It talks about research and development in meteorology. Okay. So statics of meteorology, hydrology, all these things are there. Apart from this, WMO also talks about the status of world climate. Okay. That is one. This is a very famous report. It also publishes greenhouse gas bulletin. Now, in case if you've al already seen the previous lecture on reports, tell me which is the body which publishes greenhouse gas protocol. Okay, that is a question for you. So with W, sorry, just a second. Yeah, with WMO, you know, need to know just its basic activities and the basic reports which it has published. That is good enough. Okay. Then we have World Wildlife Fund for Nature. Okay. So this is also very prominent. Okay. What it does. So one, it is famous for its living planet report. Okay. So one is this living planet report. Secondly, it is also famous for Earth R. Okay. So every year this Earth R and in which 
the lights are turned off okay so that, that is again an environment related awareness initiative apart from that it has this debt for nature swaps the concept for this also was pioneered by wwf debt for nature it is simple that a portion of the money is going to be raised in exchange for something related to nature okay so this again talks about sustainable financing in general so debt for nature swap living planet report all of this is by wwf what is wwf it is a non governmental organization okay again that is one thing that you need to be aware about okay moving forward then you have ipcc okay ipcc is this intergovernmental panel on climate change it was formed in the year 1988 okay formed by bodies wmo we have just seen wmo we've also seen unep world meteorological organization wmo and unep united nations environment program okay and it was also has been a recipient of the nobel peace prize that is also one thing that you might be uh, like be knowing about okay so that is one all right now one more thing i have to tell you it does not produce any scientific research on its own it is just it does not do it on its own it just collates and publishes the report and its reports are known as assessment report all right right now the sixth assessment report is out it talks about a lot of trends fine so this synthesis report is basically a total comprehensive summary of all the uh, reports of sixth assessment report okay so now this report is out there are few things which i have to at least highlight here with this respect to this report okay so first of all this report directly tells you that number 1 there is an unprecedented i'll just write down uh, separately oh, one second yeah this report basically highlights that there has been this unprecedented global warming to the extent 1.1 degree celsius increase has happened so far okay so this is totally unprecedented 1.1 degree celsius increase has already happened okay right so this is the first part which is which tells you and again how is that impacting overall that is one thing which tells you second thing which it tells you that there are widespread political impacts out of this okay which includes impact on biodiversity impacts on least developing countries which are threatened with sea level rise and they can also be submerged which can lead to political conflicts okay which can lead to other issues so these climate impacts are also highlighted again it highlights the increase extreme weather events okay which is going to be again a consequence of all of this right then it talks that adaptation and mitigation will become a challenge which both of them requires a lot of money it so it also emphasizes the need for urgent climate finance okay and it does say that while this temperature rise is very harm dangerous but if there is an adequate climate finance which is going to happen then adaptation and mitigation can happen and we can arrest these developments so it does offer a piece of hope at the end right so these are one of the major takeaways from this ipcc report right apart from this this also quantifies let's say that there is going to be a lot of lot say lot of losses because of climate change there is going to be economic costs right many people around in india and around the world will be threatened with coastal flooding so on and so forth so yes it gives in general a lot of issues for example droughts rainfall changes in pre precipitation etc right and basically that 40% of india will face water scarcity by the year 2050 so yeah it has a lot of predictions in its report so these are some of the main things we should need to know about it all right and in india it also highlights the case of odisha which will see because of sea level rise and because of increasing temperatures of the sea cyclones etc so there are also threats which it highlights all right sites we have already covered okay when i was discussing washington convention now i will tell you other bodies associated with it okay so for sites number 1 the management authority in india is the director directorate of the wildlife preservation that's one there is also 
other management authorities see insights you have to grant a license so that the animal etc or the plant can be traded so it can also be done by wccb we'll also see this body very shortly okay by the way wccb is a body created under wildlife protection act of 1972 all right and for scientific see management authorities are these scientific authorities are zoological survey and botanical survey all these bodies we'll see in the part 2 of this lecture apart from this see there is an international consortium on combating wildlife crime right there is mike which is monitoring the illegal killing of elephants okay and again there is a uh, initiative for endangered tree species fine so we'll see this is an international consortium on combating wildlife crime here all you need to know is what are the bodies or the partner agencies it includes sites one it includes interpol two it includes world bank unodc united nations office on drugs and crime and the last is world customs organization that is all you need to know that there is an international consortium to combat wildlife crime okay that is one by the way when i was telling you about sites sites basically is intergovernmental okay sites is intergovernmental and then we'll also see other so this this is international consortium so world custom organization world bank un odc interpol and sites okay then of course mike we've already seen if you see closely the logo of sites this tusk will give you the idea about what is mike which is monitoring the illegal killing of elephants all right again this is about how to prevent illegal killing and basically this is about wildlife crime again in wildlife crime we have a famous body which is traffic now this is actually an ngo non governmental organization okay so that is one and one more question which are the bodies which have established it so again we have seen both these bodies it is established by wwf and it is established by iucn okay so wwf plus iucn is what makes traffic possible all right and again here the idea is that the trade in the plants or the animals does not threaten the survival of the species so even that is something that you need to be aware about okay then again there is a south asia wildlife enforcement network savan now savan is supported by bodies like wildlife crime control bureau in india and internationally it also has let's say traffic is also supporting savan because see these enforcement net networks they have to have a close coordination between interpol between different bodies within india outside india so on and so forth so even this is also one and i have tried to club all the wildlife crime related bodies at one place okay this is savan then there is a coalition against wildlife trafficking so this again is an ngo okay non governmental organization this is a coalition against wildlife trafficking so it is a voluntary public private coalition of groups okay and these organizations which are working together okay so that is also one thing coalition against the wildlife trafficking okay so here see one question can be like upsc can trick you saying that this is a un body or this is a intergovernmental body so both things are wrong it is a voluntary public private partnership okay and it is basically an ngo then there is also this coalition to end wildlife trafficking online because during covid it was seen that a lot of online portals okay especially in the deep and the dark web had established which basically was doing this online trafficking and basically you could have add these animals in the cart etc etc so to stop this wwf traffic and this international fund for animal welfare they have come up together to create this coalition to end this online so even this is important this is a relatively new coalition which has come up okay which also highlights that this online threat is also increasing and it needs to be taken care of then you have united nations forum on forest now this is also very important okay so again this is under eco soc uh, and you have this department of social sorry economic and social affairs so even that is one thing you need to know one second this is having now this is has a very unique distinction of having a universal membership okay otherwise what you will see that many bodies let's say some of the members have joined some members don't join here it has a universal membership 
of all the member state of United Nations. So that is one thing. So one is ECOSOC, one is universal membership, and third is it publishes a report known as Global Forest Goals Report. Okay, Global Forest Goals Report published. This is United Nations Forum on Forest, Universal Membership, and ECOSOC. That is something you need to be aware about. Okay, then there is this Global Tiger Forum. Now it is the only, the only international and intergovernmental forum. Okay, now. This is basically having its secretariat in New Delhi. Okay, so this is also one thing to save the tiger worldwide that you should know. Now, again, with respect to tiger, there is a Saint Petersburg Declaration. Okay, Saint Petersburg is in Russia, and this declaration talks about how to double the population of tigers. Then we have this TX2 initiative, which again talks about doubling the population of tigers, as and India has been able to. Double its population of tigers, roughly from fourteen hundred to almost close to three thousand now. Okay, so even that is something we need to be aware about. Okay, so this is the Global Tiger Forum, headquartered in Delhi, and this is the only intergovernmental and international body to save the tigers. Okay, and then you have ITTO, International Tropical Timber Organization. Okay, again two things can be asked: whether this is intergovernmental. So answer is yes, this is intergovernmental. Okay. And second question with this, whether this is under UN or not. So yes, this is under UN. So this is both intergovernmental and a UN body, okay, which talks about saving the tropical forest areas. Okay, so tropical timber organization. All right. In fact, in the COP fifteen of CBD, again this body was spoken about, and it spoke about how can the tropical forests etc. can be saved. Okay, so again, this becomes a very important body for us to focus on. This is UN in UN CBD. So this is basically ITTO, International Tropical Timber Organization. Okay. So this brings me basically to the end here. Okay. So here, basically, what we have seen, we have seen a list of topics. I'll just quickly run through them. So Commission on Sustainable Development. Okay. Then there is IUCN. We have seen UNEP. We have seen World Meteorological Organization. Okay, we have seen WWF and its initiatives. We have seen IPCC and just learned about the sixth assessment report. Okay, we have seen sites. We have seen International Consortium on Wildlife Crime, Mike Traffic, Savan Coalition of Wild Against Wildlife Trafficking. We have also seen this coalition to end wildlife trafficking online, United Nations Forum on Forest, Global Tiger Forum. And International Tropical Timber Organization. Okay, so this brings me to the end of the environmental bodies. That is the first part. We've done the international bodies here. Now I will be transi transitioning to the Indian environmental organizations and bodies. Okay, so these two parts combined will definitely aid you in your preparation. All right, and again, in in case you want to join the prelims crash course for environment, you can do so. You will get the access to all the lectures at one place, and also you'll get your static notes combined. Okay, so I'll meet you very soon in the part two. Thank you.